Hello and welcome to the Monday, December 18th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm again recording back from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier this weekend wrote about an interesting exploit script he found that targets a recent Rocket MQ vulnerability. The vulnerability CVE 2023-33246 was made public in July and a proof of concept was actually released pretty much a couple days after, if not the same day the patch was released. The script Xavier found attempts to find and exploit random Rocket MQ servers. An initial bash script will install dependencies needed to compile the scanning tool mass scan. Once compiled, it will then scan the internet for exposed Rocket MQ servers to exploit. The attacker appears to have done similar scans before. Interestingly, Xavier noted that there was some common out tool in the code that basically pointed to other vulnerabilities, like, for example, Webmin and WordPress. And Xavier isn't only going for the latest uh, Bash and Python malware, he's also found a self-compiling C-sharp script. In this case, the exploit downloads the C-sharp code and compiles it on the victim's system. Not terribly unusual for something like this to happen because that, of course, guarantees it's compiled for the correct libraries, the correct architecture and such versus just downloading the binary. This requires that the victim has the .NET framework installed, but as Xavier points out in the diary, almost well, all Windows systems have the .NET framework installed because it's so commonly used for software written for Windows. Voice over IP technology company 3CX is in the news again, this time alerting customers of a vulnerability in the company's 3CX tool. The vulnerability is a SQL injection vulnerability, and in order for it to be exploited, the SQL integration needs to be enabled. Notice that is not just for SQL database. I think MongoDB was sort of a NoSQL database that also may be used with this integration. As noted in 3CX's advisory, this only affects a very small number of customers. That this has been like a quarter percent because that SQL integration is actually sort of more a legacy integration. So nothing that you should use necessarily with a current installed system, but can't hurt to double check that you don't have it enabled. Version 18 and 20 are affected if you are running the web-based CRM integrations. Well, uh, they're not affected by this vulnerability. But there is no patch at this point, so 3CX's recommendation is disable the SQL injection integration. And Akamai is reporting that they are seeing exploits for CVE 2023-47565, which is now integrated into the Mirai botnet or similar uh, botnets. Uh, this vulnerability was patched about two weeks ago, so very quick here uh, for it uh, to be included in a widespread botnet like this, and it affects a QNAP Viostore NVRs. As always, uh, Pretty, pretty, please do not expose these type of devices to the internet and disable any unneeded functionalities. Quite frequently, what I find is the same is also true for the NASes and not just for the network video recorders here, but uh, there are always vulnerabilities in these additional components. They are installed and enabled by default. And, uh, well, uh, just go through it and make sure that everything that's enabled, that's installed, is actually something that you're using. In this case, since this is an NVR there, uh, it's more focused, so uh, there aren't really a ton of components. So you're really left uh, with uh, just patching, of course. A patch is available and just not exposing it to the internet. Well, uh, exposing things to the internet, uh, that of course is also true for firewalls, where you don't want to expose the admin interface to the internet. 
The latest example is uh, PFSense, uh, actually software that uh, is uh, quite well respected, hasn't had a ton of uh, vulnerabilities, so we haven't really mentioned it a lot here in the podcast. The source code security company SonarCube actually discovered three different vulnerabilities in PFSense, two cross-site scripting issues and a code injection vulnerability. The tricky part here is that the vulnerabilities work together. The code injection vulnerability does require authentication, but you can trigger it via cross-site scripting. If you happen to get a user that's logged in as administrator to click on the link. Well, and uh, today, something a little bit different. Usually I do these things on Friday, but because we have sort of the holiday week coming up, I want to do it now. This weekend, I recorded a quick interview with Chris Elgie about the Holiday Hack Challenge. So, uh, Chris, uh, can you tell us a little bit about this? Yes, absolutely. This this year, the focus is really AI. Maybe that's not a, a surprise. It seems to be a, a, a theme across the industry, but... Uh, but challenges were built with AI, art, voices, and players will have to use AI to solve some of the challenges in the game. Oh, that's really cool. So it's not that AI is discouraged. Uh, so it's not cheating if you use AI. It's actually part of the game. That's correct. In fact, if you want to have a winning report, we require that you use AI in some way, however you want. Uh, just just give us at least a couple of the prompts that you use. So AI, AI can be used in a bunch of attacks, uh, like writing code and uh any hints as to how AI can be used in this particular challenge? Yeah, so for the players, there's there's one challenge where they'll have to get past an entry system that's expecting a certain uh, uh, character's voice. So they'll need to find a sample of that character's voice and then and then have it uh, use a, a tool to create that voice saying a particular phrase to get through a door. Wow, that's that's actually quite exciting. Uh, I tr- I played with AI and voice creation a little bit. Uh, maybe you saw I posted a uh, little sample where I sort of did a podcast all on AI. And the one thing AI doesn't get right is my accent. So um, do you have my voice in there as well? Or? So in fact, we do. With your permission, yeah, yeah we yeah. we uh, we modeled your voice. And if if uh, listeners want to go and play the game and try to find you, they they can look. But as you mentioned, the, the model is biased and it strips out your beautiful accent, so it does not sound quite like you. So my voice is still clone-proof, kind of, you're saying. <laughs> you're safe so far, I think. I'm, I'm safe so far. That's great. I also see a lot of people post like these uh, fish uh, icons there on social media. That sounds, it's a, it's a, it's a little side game or of the, uh, of the challenge. It is, yeah. We we had a lot of fun building this, and that's that's one of the things that we had uh, a good time building. Where there are AI generated uh, fish in the style of Voynich manuscript, and uh, <laughs> with AI descriptions and titles, and wow. and one that actually looks like somebody from Counterhack. If you could find that special fish, wow, there's a special Counterhack fish. Kind of there thing. is with yeah. with the goatee and glasses. Oh, and a okay, fedora. okay, yeah. The, the special hat probably gives it mm. away, kind of. It does, yeah. Yeah, uh, who who that could possibly be? Because uh, I, I think that. I, I saw the pictures. They're like extremely creative. So you're saying they're AI created, actually, those fish. 100%. 100% AI. That's amazing. Uh, how many of these fish did you uh, put together? There, I'll say over 100. The exact number the players will have to find out. Okay. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that that's quite a bit of work. Uh, scripting, I guess, or some automation would be required to get them all kind of. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah, 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 they'll have to play with yeah. WebSocket some. Yeah, I love that uh, because I always say you either become the script or you write the script. So here you teach them to write the script. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Uh, how long does the challenge go for? Uh, how long do people have to submit uh, answers? Yep. So we'll take submissions through January 5th. Uh, and that's, that's through January 5th, midnight, any time zone in the world. And that's when competition period ends. But of course, the game will be up for probably the next three years. So people, uh, so can, so people can still play just uh, if they want to finish. And it's all free? It is all free. And the top prize is a free Sans course. So. Wow. Wow. So, well, it's a Sans course, but it just happens to be free because you, to you because you want it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's really amazing. Uh, so how many players at this point do you know? I know we're above uh, 10,000, so, oh, yeah. so, so lots of people so are really busy. Here. And uh, yeah, uh, I played a little bit last year. I haven't gotten around yet to it this year. Uh, so I'll, I'll definitely try it out uh, because it's a ton of fun. I always say the great thing about this challenge is a lot of the bad guys are playing it too. So if you're on a blue team, you should have extra time because they're all busy playing the hack challenge. So join them in and uh, and solve some of those challenges. Or, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thanks. 
So uh, sans.org slash holiday hack. Yeah, thanks, Chris, for filling us in here on the Holiday Hack Challenge. And uh, hope you're playing. If anybody finds my voice here in the challenge, let me know. And it uh, would be interesting to uh, hear what it sounds like. I'll probably go look for myself. And to give me some time playing uh, next week, there will be a no Stormcast, just as a quick heads up because of the holidays. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening. and. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.